I'm killing the battery. That's it. Wow, that was impressive though. Holy cow. That is night and day different than what we had before. All right, so in our last video, we did some testing with the Inductrix FPV and the eSheen E10S and did some comparisons to see if we needed to do any voltage modifications to the E10S. Turns out we didn't, but we desperately need to do something to fix the Inductrix FPV. I tried to fly it last weekend and we were trying to fly both of them together with a couple of us and this thing would only fly for a minute versus three minutes for the other. It, it was just really pathetic. With the built-in battery, a lot of people have experienced this, I get about five seconds worth of flight. So we're not gonna bother with this thing at all because it's total garbage. So we're just gonna throw that out. But we do have several batteries here that we are gonna test with and we're gonna do a couple things. The first thing we're gonna do is a control. So just see how long this will fly with one of these batteries. We'll make sure they're charged, do a test control flight. Then we're gonna modify the connectors on here. A lot of people have found that these connectors, these are uh, JSTPH 1.25s, are just really, really bad. And if you change these out, you will get much better connections. With the Inductrix, these come with JS2PH 2.0 connectors. And you can see here, it's a lot bigger. So we're gonna actually take these off and replace them with these connectors. I've just gotten a bag of them and we're gonna solder them on. My goal is to get everything using these same connectors so I can use my same multi-chargers with everything. It'll make it much more convenient. So we're gonna switch out these connectors. We'll do another test and see how much of it goes. After that, then we're gonna actually do a voltage mod on this. Part of the problem we had was the quad would drop when the voltage was still well too high. Um, they sh it should have a lot more flight left on it. So we're gonna try one of the mods and hopefully not ruin it to see what happens. So first step, we're gonna do a control. In the last video, I actually made this little custom wiring harness so we could test these batteries with the E10S. So we're gonna use this because it's easier to check the voltage. It was interesting, with these little connectors, the E10S ran just fine. So we are at 4.21 volts, that's perfect. Let's go fly. Okay, with this battery, it flew just over a minute and 10 seconds, a little bit longer than it did the other day. I think a little bit of that is I'm flying over a surface now. So there's a little back pressure, keep it in the air just a few seconds longer, but it's about the same. And we are at 3.9, four volts, pretty much identical to what we were seeing the other day. So now the next step is to replace the connectors on these. Okay, so the first battery we tried to do didn't work at all. making these yourself do it this way this way is just better because it's just going to be safer when you need to plug and unplug it you're not going to have any possibility of pulling this connector out i'm not even sure i'm going to use this battery well here's what i'm going to do i'm not even going to use this i'm going to take this off and i'm going to redo it this way so this is what i'm going to do not this so now we have an updated battery, but now the problem is this is not going to connect here. Even though this hasn't fully cured, I, I think it's fine to use. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. But now we have to put the same connector on this side. There we go. I do wish I'd gotten had been able to get some smaller heat shrink around there, but it'll it'll function. So now we have a new battery. We have a new connection. Now we can finally test it. Oh, 
Okay, I did not expect that at all. I'll honestly say, I thought it would make a little bit of a difference. That was almost three times the flight just by changing the connectors. Um, that, that, that's shocking to me. Why did they put that little garbage on there? Why did they do that? That's so terrible. This is so much better. What's really surprising to me, and I do want to check the voltage here, was, and I've seen videos of other people doing this, and but seriously, it doesn't seem like it should be that big of a deal, but it makes a humongous difference. Um, it's pretty easy to do. I only ruined one battery in the process. Uh, let's see, so what are we at here? Uh, I can't quite get a connection. There we go, 3.75 volts. So what this is telling me also is all of our previous tests stopped at 3.9 volts. What's happening is this is cutting off the voltage, I think, at 3.7 volts, which is acceptable. The problem was with these little bitty connectors, it would actually pull too hard and trip that earlier. There was plenty of power left, but it was causing the voltage to spike and or negative spike down below 3.7, and it was dropping. With these bigger connectors, we're getting a much more solid, consistent amount of power. So you can draw down the voltage on these, and that's nearly an acceptable time period. That makes this an actual flyable quadcopter. It still, on the same battery, doesn't fly as long as the E10S, but it makes it acceptable. So normally when I'm making these videos, I do them all at one time. So I go from step A to step B to step C. Here I'm actually on day three, and I'm gonna show you where I'm at, and we've got one more thing we're gonna test, and I don't know how much exactly you've seen. We'll figure that out later in editing. But here's the end result of where we are. We have our 1S batteries, and we have added connectors on here. And we have made put, um, these are JSTPH 2.0 connectors, the same ones that are on the Isheen. I really like these connectors, and it makes it universal. So I'm standardizing on these connectors, and I have left the wire coming out because that way I can grab a hold of it. I clipped the little extra snap thing on here that makes them hold on super, super tight. I don't want these super, super tight. I wanna actually be able to take them off. So I've soldered new connectors on here. That's probably gonna be a separate video for you to see exactly how I did that. But I did that on both of these here. Um, I've super glued the end on here. I used a liquid electrical tape to put it all together. Anyway, I'm really happy with how these batteries turned out, but it's taken me several tries to get it. We went from one minute flights to three minute flights just making this one change. It was amazing. So we've got one more thing we're gonna do in this video, which is really about modifying this to make it usable. Also, we have the JST connector here. Um, I re-soldered this with better insulation on it, better heat shrink that was smaller. So you didn't see that. But now we're gonna take this cover off. I do have, you have to have a tiny, tiny little screwdriver for this thing. So it actually took me a few tries to find a screwdriver that would fit mainly just in this back hole. Um, make sure it would fit in there. These side ones aren't a problem, but we've got the cover held on with three screws. Honestly, this part is my favorite part about the Inductrix FPV. This camera, the way it's molded together, um, I really, really like that, but I've never taken this off before to see exactly what we have inside. So inside we have the antenna. Oh, we've got the screws here. I'm gonna make super sure I don't lose these. So we're gonna take a second and move these out of the way. So those I would never get a replacement for. So one of the things people have talked about is removing this connector because it draws power badly and I'm not going to bother with that one right now. I know it does make a little bit of a difference. They so get rid of this Y connectors and solder it on directly. I'm not going to do that. I'm more worried about... Okay, so it's the two resistors right here. I've seen several ways that people do this. But the easiest way and the way we're going to do is we're just going to blob a little bit of solder right on top of them and just short the whole thing out. This is the uh, low voltage detector. So when it gets to what we believe is 3.7 volts, it's killing the power and shutting down the quadcopter. And I want to go below that. So even though the battery changes made most of the difference, 
we're gonna see how much of a difference this makes. So I'll just say this now, if you don't have a fine tip, good soldering iron and very small solder, don't even try this. Um, it's pretty delicate in here. I'm gonna try it anyway. Okay, so I'm actually gonna lower the, I tried this a couple times and couldn't quite get it to stick. I'm actually gonna lower the temperature of my soldering iron a little bit. See if I can get it to stick to these better. Okay, it took me way too many tries. I had to get in the way so I couldn't actually film it, but I got a, probably too big of a blob of solder on there. Had to get my temperature on my soldering iron just right in order to get it to stick, but it's there. So now we're gonna put it back together and see how much of a difference it makes. Um, again, I probably wouldn't recommend that one for everybody. That one's a lot more difficult than uh, replacing the connectors. So I'm absolutely amazed right now. When we started, I could only fly this thing for a minute and it would just fall out of the air. It was pathetic. Now, after the two modifications, I just flew it for four minutes. That is four times longer. We're gonna see what the voltage on this is because that's my one concern, but it didn't seem to have any problem with that at all. 3.68, so, oh, you can't see that. It's 3.68, which is still fine, so it dipped a little low and I probably could have pushed it a little bit harder and gotten a little bit more but that is a humongous difference over what we had before I'm gonna do one more flight now because when I was doing this before and trying to fly this I could get one minute of flight out of it I'm gonna do an actual FPV flight and see what it looks like because I haven't really gotten to flown this in a while I've been flying the Ishii 10 s and I'm gonna see now just as an off chance how it flies all right so we've got it here ready to go we have a little static in the video not sure if I, I'm not even sure if I'm on the right channel honestly but I have video the video is good power is good speed is pretty good you know what, I will say the camera in this is really good. Hey, here's where we're recording the uh, earlier, the pool table. We're gonna take this pretty slow, although I don't, I don't do slow very well. Seems to be pretty good. Oh, this is so much better. So much better than what we were at. We're fixing those chairs. They broke. Yeah, there we go. So this is actually flyable at this point. It was not flyable. It was basically, I didn't mind soldering on the board and possibly ruining it because it just wasn't usable. Now that's not true after I changed the battery connectors. Do the battery connectors. That's a no brainer, really. Still going. Holy cow, this thing's got legs. All right, I'm gonna call that good though, cause that's over three minutes, maybe four minutes. And I think that we're running, uh, we're running low. Come on, get back here. Get back here, get back here. You can do it, you can do it. Oh, come on, there's the cow. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. Oh, they can't quite make it up to the table. Oh, that's it. No, it's gonna, I'm, kill, I'm killing the battery, that's it. Wow, that was impressive though. Holy cow. That is night and day different than what we had before. All right, we're gonna do one last test on this battery to see what the voltage is at, but my gosh, that's a huge difference. I can't believe how much of a difference that makes. That's so good, this thing's actually usable again. It was unusable. It was just embarrassing when I took it out last time. It just fell out of the air in no time flat. Now, it's outstanding. Where are we at here? We'll get this in, in camera. 3.4 volts. So it's low, but that's still not, I don't think, too terribly low. That's about what we got to with the Ishin E10 also. Um, wow. Yeah. Blade should be embarrassed by the connectors that they put on here. I mean... You replace the connectors and it makes a huge difference. 
take off that voltage mod. I get why they do that. They don't want people ruining their batteries. These are made more f as toys than... These are designed, I think, a little more for a hobbyist who they expect to know what they're doing. These, they are... Joe Schmo's going to pick up. So I understand why they did that, but I, I wouldn't... I don't like it. Um, making that mod also made this thing a thousand times better. I had just about given up on the Inductrix FPV. I pretty much had given up on the Inductrix FPV. But now... I, I want to go out and fly it again. Now now we're talking about a head-to-head. -head. It was a no-brainer on which one to recommend. Um, but we've got some competition here between these two. And there are even a couple more coming. So stay tuned to the channel. I, if you have found this uh, useful, give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Please subscribe. We're trying to build a subscriber base. And it's time to, to, uh, to work on that some more. We're going to include a very specific video coming soon on how to make this mod to the batteries. I think this is the way to go. I've seen other ways, and I, I like this. I'm very, very happy with what I've got going here um, because it's universal and it will work exceptionally well in whatever quadcopter I want. Goes connects right there, ready to go. Once I change, I'm going to change the connector on here too, so it's the same across the board. Thanks for watching Drone Racer 101. And now, especially with the mods for this thing, let's go racing.